Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern. Well, guess what? Take a look at this. This is the first full week of December, right around December 5th and 6th. Is this a piece of the polar vortex blasting to the south across eastern North America? We may be in for a very wintry pattern setting up into mid-December. And, and what's going on with our post-Thanksgiving storms here? Well, yeah, it is storms. There's going to be a one-two punch, but it's not going to be exactly what we expected. I'll explain more exactly what's going to happen with this, as well as your wintry forecast as we head deeper into December with that potential of that cold air blast. Let's get into it. All right, so here you have it. Let's take a look as we go into the future and see if any of this massive polar air associated with our polar vortex is going to barrel down the pike into parts of eastern North America. Yeah, and there it is. You can see this is by the end of November, beginning of December. You see it start to move across the central part of Canada there. You see that swirl? That is going to make a move for the U.S. East Coast by the first full week of December there. Take a look at that. Yeah, and it does eventually lift out, but... This is probably the biggest surge of cold air you'll see going forward so far. So let's take a look. So as we take a look at the upper air pattern, it looks pretty boring there through your Thanksgiving holiday. Look at that. Yeah, ridge here across the east. Even this system that I'm going to show you momentarily on the GFS and uh, the Euro uh, pulls up into the northeast. It pulls too much warm air. But watch these two locations, the Gulf of Alaska and Greenland. These are the blocking areas we're going to go in time here as we head on towards December. Watch the pattern that sets up here. We got a massive, two massive blocks here, Greenland and the Gulf of Alaska and this trough. Watch this trough and this trough, little trough here in the northeast. Watch what happens here. Yeah, you get this massive ridge in the east. Watch this little cell right here. This is associated with a piece of the polar vortex that breaks off and heads southeast toward, towards the Great Lakes and the northeast. And this is essentially where you get massive blocking going on. There's our Greenland block starting to form and line up perfectly. And depending on how this lines up, yeah, this could retrograde back to the northwest. And this sets us up for a very troughy part and winter season here into mid-December. Look at that block up there in Greenland. All right, so the polar vortex initially is in two separate cells. This is a weaker cell, which is conducive for breaking off pieces of energy from it into eastern North America for colder systems. Initially, that looks promising, but it consolidates over Greenland into one big cell Tuesday, November 30th, uh, the 29th into Wednesday, November 30th here. And then you can see how it kind of retreats across Greenland here and northern Asia. But look at this. This is by Thursday, December 8th. You can see... Stratospheric warming in the upper layers of the atmosphere starts to erode the polar vortex up here. And this is the time frame, Thursday, December 8th, that pieces, a big old piece of this polar vortex will head southeastward across eastern North America. All right, we're going to start off with the GFS service map here. You can take a look as we head through Thanksgiving here. You know, the only area that's going to see any sort of precipitation whatsoever is going to be parts of the deep south here. You can see we have quite a bit in the way of uh, problems here across the deep south but you know what as this goes in time we have two pieces of energy initially for friday now big question was you know a couple days ago were these two pieces of energy going to meet up not necessarily this one's hanging back here across the deep south this one's scooting off the northeast coast pretty rapidly and Precipitation is pretty marginal for any snowfall accumulations here into the northeast. You can see it's mainly up here in northern New England. This is Friday at 4 p.m. Most of the rest of the northeast will be seeing rainfall by this time, and that rainfall will stretch into parts of the deep south. Now, western part of Texas, you could see some snowfall out of this as we go in time. Now, look at the second system here. Here it is. It's wrapping up just west of the Mississippi River Valley, and it's going to bring up, yep, you guessed it, more warm air. Take a look at this. As we continue to go in time, this comes right barreling right up the Ohio River Valley. This is for your Sunday, 4 a.m., looking pretty wet here across much of the northeast. And look at that as we head in time. Yeah, we only see a little bit of snow on the backside initially as the rain changes to a wet snow in those snow belt areas. And then that lifts out to the northeast and high pressure builds in 
for the middle of next week. Now as we go in time, let's see if there's anything that catches our eye. As we go through the rest of November here into December, yeah, you start to see the proverbial broken record here. Systems moving up the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys, pushing this warm air all the way up the East Coast. This is going to be a trend we see at least until you can see Thursday, December 1st. Colder air filtering on the backside of the system. Going to be interesting to watch that. You see northern New England here. That is Friday, December 2nd. And then we're going to see that big blast polar vortex behind this next system. This is Sunday, December 4th. You can see here across the Ohio River Valley, we get another push of moisture just before the bottom falls out. And then we could, this is December 6th, massive polar outbreak here across the northeast with plenty of lake enhanced snow showers. I wanted to take you through the short term here across the east here with your future radar. Take a look at this, the HRRR. This is Wednesday, Wednesday morning into afternoon. You see a little bit of snow showers here with the frontal boundary across parts of upstate New York. But you know what? This is nothing to write home about. If you have any travel plans, it doesn't look half bad here across much of the northeast. Look at this. That kind of scoots on to the south. Look at this. This is 2 a.m. Thanksgiving morning. You really can't complain. Look at that. You have to go all the way down south here to get any sort of shower and thunderstorm activity. Always a fun product to look at. Let's go a little bit medium range here with the GFS with snowfall. This is through Wednesday next week, November 30th. You can see, yeah, it's the west, the mountain west here that gets most of it. Parts of the northern plains and into parts of northern New England here, especially the higher elevations. As we continue to go out in time here, Thing, wow, look at that, eastern Canada. We finally get some pushes here. This is some hint of that big polar blast. This is December 8th. Look at that across eastern Canada. 44 to 60 inches. That's that's pretty crazy. Ah, and King Euro model. Let's take a look. We'll do the same thing here. Go out medium term. Don't read too much into it, but there it is. This is through Friday, December 2nd. We can't go as much out with this 12Z Euro, but look at that. Yeah, up there into parts of Canada, it's upward in this 12 to 28 inches. And look at the Intermountain West out here into parts of the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas. You're picking up some beneficial snowfall here. So here is our rainfall here across the southeast, and then you get up into the northeast. So this is taking us through Saturday here. You can see across the northeast, initially with that Friday system, we'll see about a quarter inch on average, maybe closer to a half an inch here in the parts of upstate New York, northern upstate New York into northern Vermont. But for the most part, a quarter inch, it'll be light. Look at the lion's share of the rainfall, though. This is anywhere from two to four inches in the cro across parts of eastern Texas and Louisiana. And watch this. We'll just cruise on into Sunday and Monday. A big old rain event here. Propagating up into parts of the northeast. This is where you could see one to one and a half inches of rain. In fact, why don't we zoom in up there? And as we put this into motion, there's that first system Friday. There it is. Average of a quarter inch on average here across the northeast. Then we blast this next system in. Seeing about an inch on average, as you get into this, take a look at that ending uh, Wednesday, November 30th. So yeah, anywhere in these purple areas, you'll be averaging up close to an inch of rainfall here for your Sunday system. All right, so let's take a look at the surface maps here. Here is the GFS. This is going into Friday. So let's just back this up a day. There's your Thanksgiving. It's looking pretty nice across most of these. There's only going to be a few areas. Let's stop it right there. There it is. There's only going to be a few areas where you got some problems. It's actually just here, the southern plains and parts of the southeast. You got big old high pressure here as well as out west as well. This is in control of your weather as we continue. Look at this. Yeah, so we got the first piece of energy that pushes to the northeast here. Let's see if we can get that to stop. There we go. So this is Saturday, really early morning, right after midnight, Friday night. This first piece of energy works to the northeast. It doesn't have any phasing going on here's the second piece of energy and a third piece of energy we got really nothing riding up along the northern branch of the jet stream here except for this take a look at this friday there it is friday at right around noon that's at first that additional part of the energy equation that just doesn't make it into the southern sections here to phase so look at this as high pressure builds in saturday so you'll have rain in the northeast friday 
High pressure building in Saturday, and look what rides up the Mississippi and Ohio River Valley for your Sunday. This big old strengthening low, it starts to occlude a little bit, maybe some little bit of energy here, redevelopment uh, near Virginia here. So we're going to have a big old rainstorm here for the most part across the Northeast. I know some of you are hoping for snowfall out of this. If you are in northern New England, probably you might get some snow out of this, but it's not looking really promising. And there's that potential for secondary low development, but behind this low, it's still marginal for any type of snowfall. And you can see it kind of just weakens and washes out as it plummets there to the northeast. High pressure builds in. And then you get a second system for Wednesday, November 30th here. Might start out as a mix here and snow here on the northern fringe across parts of the Great Lakes and the Northeast. But look at that. That's another broken record of a storm that ejects out of the plains in Mississippi River Valley up into the upper Midwest here. And you do have a cold high to the north here, so you might get some sort of mixed precipitation early in the morning here. But look how the warm air just winds out, 978 millibar low, definitely dragging a cold front here. So all this is just rain. Look what's happening out west here. Yeah, that's that trough that's kicking in, mountain snow, valley rain. So you'll pick up some beneficial rain and snow here into parts of the Sierra Nevadas as well. That's great news for you. You can use any bit of it. This low pressure just really hanging out here across the northeast. So as we go in time, it's going to become a big old wind maker across the northeast. There's Friday, December 2nd, and that kicks out to the northeast, and we get another system riding in behind it for December 5th. But there is that advertised massive trough this big push of polar vortex blast heading southward here now let's take a look at latest euro we can't go as far out with this run this 18z run but let's take a look anyways you know as we head throughout thanksgiving here there's thursday it's looking pretty nice as as much as it was on the gfs high pressure and control there's your problem spot right down into parts of the deep south and southern plains here but you know what it's you know it's not too bad you will get, look at it on the Euro here. There's some snowfall there across the panhandle of Texas. That is looking pretty interesting. Here across the northeast, here's Friday. You're going to have that rain because, look, you're on the backside of this high pressure. There's that these other two pieces of energy. They're not phasing. This is exactly the complete turnaround that we've seen from the previous couple days where we were seeing model runs uh, converge these systems and phase. But look at that. There's Saturday. We kick out that system in the northeast, high pressure builds in, and then we got this big old system across the south. Now, look what starts to happen. We can't really go beyond this, but look at that. That's going to wind up this direction as high pressure retreats off the U.S. east coast. So, starting off with the tropical Atlantic here, it's not very tropical as of late. Yeah, we have a big intertropical convergence zone out here, but as we go in time, Wind shear is just going to be a bad thing for these systems. They can't get their, you know, their intensity off the ground here. Now, if we take a look here at parts of the Caribbean, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, all my Caribbean island friends down here. Look at this. Yeah, it's looking pretty clear. Now, there is a disturbance here in parts of Central America. This is a Monday, November 28th. But, you know, it really is, we're getting to a part of the season here where it's really, really hard to get any sort of development. It has to take almost short of a miracle here to get rid of any of this wind shear. And as you can see, we added to December 6th here. There's nothing to be had unless you go out here, these fish storms. These are literally getting sheared apart out here. This is uh, not much to write home about, so to speak. And as you can see, as we continue to go in time, you know, it's it almost is looking to me like tropical season is over. So let's take a look at the Western Pacific here. So, yeah, it's as of late here as we head throughout the rest of the week. Take a look at this. This is the Philippines looking pretty quiet. That's good. You got a frontal boundary up here in South China up towards parts of Taiwan. Now we're going to see if that uh, frontal boundary can shift a little bit to the south. It's not going to make it too far south, though. Let me give you a hint there. So as we continue here, it's Friday, Saturday, November 26th. We have a tropical wave by the end of this coming weekend that will approach parts of the northern Philippines here. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. This may potentially develop into something. It doesn't look like anything major at the current moment, but it does flare up pretty quickly. And you have to watch these this time of year. But you see the wind shear kind of gets to it there. 
This is Tuesday, November 29th. Now, let me back this up here. This is what we've been watching for quite some time. This is Tuesday, November 29th. So let me back this up. Here is the 28th. So we have our tropical wave out here. Watch this as I go to the 29th, the 30th. There it is, Wednesday the 30th. This could be a potential typhoon. Now it's starting to arc towards the southern Philippines here. As we get this frontal boundary up towards the north, it's kind of inhibiting any sort of typhoons or tropical storms. Now let's see what the GFS model does with this system. It has a hit in the southern Philippines. So if you're anywhere in the Philippines, please continue to watch this because it could still veer a little bit to the north and affect any part of the Philippine island chain here. So please stay tuned. This is definitely not set in stone, but the trend has been to bring some sort of typhoon into the Philippines region. You can see what's left of it continues westward here. This is Saturday, December 3rd towards Vietnam. So yeah, it may redevelop here into a typhoon by December 4th here, Sunday, December 4th, approaching the southern coastline of Vietnam and then making a potential landfall. So things are staying pretty active out here in the Western Pacific. I'll continue to watch it because look at here. This looks like the, the tail end here of a frontal boundary. You got to watch these just like in the Atlantic. You get some sort of flare up and you could have some potential development. But you can see we do have another tropical wave approaching the southern Philippines. This is Tuesday, December 6th. And as we continue... Yeah, things are going to stay pretty active. You see the intertropical convergence zone? Any one of these could become a tropical system. And this is Thursday, December 8th. So please stay tuned if you're in the Philippine Islands as well as Vietnam here. And John here from Canal Street, Bright Waters, New York. Take a look at that. The sky is definitely really bright too. Look at the nice bright blue sky, that nice backdrop, and look at that. It's probably a little bit chilly, but you know what? We'll take the sunshine when we can get it. Look at that. Cruising along on the roadways. Nice captures there, John. Getting out there and enjoying the sunshine. So, temperatures here. What's the big story? The big story is look at this big old blob of warm air Wednesday into Thursday. That's great travel weather. That surges into the northeast. Look, at you'll be seeing upper 40s and low 50s here across New York and Pennsylvania. Cooling down out west here a bit, but look at this. This is pretty warm. Day after Thanksgiving, if you have any shopping to do, look at that. Get out there and enjoy it. 50s. This is not too bad here across the northeast. Mid to upper 50s along the coastline into your Saturday. And look at this. Sunday, we start to see evidence of that front here across the northern plains. 20s and 30s. A little bit cooler into the northeast as well, but look at this. You can't really complain. It's about average for this time of year. Get a little bit cooler up here into northern New England, but get out there and enjoy good travel weather. Extended outlook from hometown viewers, Bingham to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Look at this. Sunday, so Wednesday into Thanksgiving Day. That's a beautiful Thanksgiving Day. If you have travel plans, that's beautiful. Look at that. Even Friday, yeah, some rainfall, quarter of an inch, but that's not too bad with that first week frontal boundary. Cold front moving through Saturday. Won't be much of a cold front. Sunny in 52, but look at this. Sunday... That next storm ejecting out of the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys, windy and up to three quarters of an inch of rain heading up towards the lower 50s. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather Northeastern. Don't forget, link is in the description down below for my winter outlook for this winter season. And also, if you want to buy me a coffee, tip jar also down below. You can find it down there. Also, Facebook Media Mark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. Also, Twitter, at Weather Eastern. And don't forget, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Thanks for joining me.